And this episode of Pen Point starts right now. This episode of Pen Point is brought to you by Busted Tees. Uh, I'm going to talk even more about Paul McCartney. And I want to do this one really carefully because what I'm about to say is not about Paul McCartney at all. Um, it really is about um, the difference in art when it's abstract and when it gets specific. And what I feel is the danger in explaining things that are poetic in prose. Uh, I always love when a singer-songwriter explains in prose what they meant by their poetry. I always enjoy it. Elvis Costello does it once in a while. I just love it. Uh, uh, John Cale has done it a couple times, and I and I just I just love it. I just I love it when Eminem talks about that. I, I just adore it. Uh, and then some people that never ever ever do it. Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan never did it. And John Lennon did it, but always in a really humble way. Like I didn't really mean anything by this. Um, I want things explained to me. And I think maybe that's a bad desire. And I'll tell you why. And I want to say before I go any further, I can't stress this enough. There's nothing wrong with Paul McCartney. Nothing. He, I don't. I don't think he has. Uh, uh, I don't think he has a mean bone in his body. I think that peace and love thing that Paul McCartney does is not hype. Is not jive. It's completely true. It's honest. It's real. I believe he's a really, really good person. What I'm going to talk about here, and I'm not saying this in order to do like a turnaround on it. What I'm talking about here is the specificity of art turning poetry into prose and the danger of that. I am not pretending to know anything that Paul McCartney believes. As a matter of fact, if I had to guess what Paul McCartney believes, every piece of evidence we have is that Paul McCartney is a good person right across the board. Uh, his politics, all that stuff, good moral person. When he first recorded Blackbird, Paul McCartney uh, didn't have any statements at all about, as far as I know, about the White Album. And I'm not a Beatle expert. I've got about, you know, uh, I have a lot of Beatle music. I have, I believe, all the bootlegs. Um, I'm tied in with Belmo, who does a lot of the Beatles stuff, and I'm friends with him. And I listen to a lot of Beatles stuff, and I listen to a lot of interviews and read a lot of books. But I'm not one of the experts. Experts on the Beatles really know the Beatles. But I believe that Paul didn't make any statements about what Blackbird meant. And then Charlie Manson and that horrible tragedy brought a racial uh, element to Blackbird and with Helter Skelter, which Paul wrote about a uh, roller coaster and about fucking, I think, and, uh, and Blackbird, and then Charlie Manson you know, as a psychotic, dangerous psychotic, made up shit about this. I don't think Paul made a statement. I believe in like the 70s or 80s, he said something about Blackbird being about a Blackbird in the backyard or something. And when you heard Blackbird in 1968, 69, when it came out, I don't remember the month. Um, Blackbird, because of the word black, and because of the uh, kind of sound, did bring to mind certain things about uh, about civil rights, but tangentially. And it also did bring to mind a blackbird, literally. And it also did bring to mind perhaps uh, uh, the raven, Edgar Allan Poe, death, sunken eyes, learn to see, and so on. It was very, very complex, plus the squeaking on the fretboard of Paul McCartney's fingers. Um, which was really what got my attention much more than the song. But I listened to Blackbird, you know, thousands of times. And every time I listened to it, it was a different experience. It had to do with, um, with uh, all sorts of stuff. And it never struck me as what Charlie Manson thought it was, but it struck me as poetry, with a lot of things flooding all through and over and around. And the mystery of the poetry, what Teller calls um, the lie that tells the greater truth. You know, it's not actually about anything prosaically, but the poetry goes directly to your heart. It's very, you know, the Dylan stuff is very true like that. All great poetry is, all the Beatles stuff is like that. But then when I saw him, uh, and I don't know when he started doing this, he started saying, and I don't know when he started making this claim, and that's probably true. He has no reason to lie, I suppose. 
that um, he wrote Blackbird specifically about the civil rights movement in the South in the 60s in America. And his introduction gets the feeling that um, uh, the United Kingdom has never had any problem with racism, but that doesn't matter. He wasn't saying that. He was thinking about, he said he was thinking about the Southern United States of America and their problem with civil rights. And that's why he wrote Blackbird. So he's now given a prosaic explanation of a poetic uh, experience. And he's also given you a code now. He has now told you that Blackbird means African American in general. And what struck me was, and I'm not saying this means anything about what Paul was feeling. It means nothing about that. Paul is entirely a good person. But sitting there listening as someone who loves to hear poetry explained prosaically, um, all of a sudden, that song loses all these other dimensions. And all of a sudden, you have to ask yourself, what does he mean by take these broken wings and learn to fly? Uh, and take these sunken eyes and learn to see. You have to ask yourself, uh, was Martin Luther King taking sunken eyes and learning to see? Was he taking broken wings and learning to fly? Um, uh, and what does he mean to the light of a dark black night? You know, uh, it becomes the prose explanation of the poetry makes it to me much more confusing. When there was no explanation for Blackbird in my mind, that whole song just kind of spun around anywhere I wanted it to go. And when uh, there was an explanation given uh, directly by the, um, by the composer, the lyricist, um, all of a sudden I had more trouble with it. So I'm saying nothing about Paul McCartney. Paul McCartney's uh, understanding of civil rights is, is greater than mine. His, um, his uh, compassion is greater than mine. He's a better person than me. Uh, I'm not saying anything different from that. Uh, but I am saying that maybe for me, when I have the urge to explain in prose something poetic, or when I have the urge to hear in prose the explanation of something poetic, maybe I don't want that anymore. Maybe Bob Dylan is absolutely right, and maybe the best thing to do is let the poetry uh, speak for itself. I don't know. Take these sunken eyes and learn to see. I want to take a minute to tell you about Busted Tees. It doesn't matter if you're into video games, movies, science fiction, or just wrapping your torso with something weird. Busted Tees literally has you covered. Get it? You may have seen a busted tee or two pop up in movies and TV shows. Now you can grab one for yourself. Head on over to BustedTees.com to find the shirt of your dreams. Your bizarre, hilarious dreams. Enter the promo code PENPOINT and receive 10% off your order.